to you about some keys this morning. On Monday, after, uh, on Monday afternoon in my office, the Lord began to speak to my heart about some things. And the Holy Spirit entered in and I just began to listen. And he took me to a particular portion of scripture. We're going to look at it here in just a second. But he reminded me of something that Peter, uh, of what Jesus had said to Simon Peter in Matthew's gospel, the 16th chapter. Don't turn there, just listen. In Matthew's gospel, the 16th chapter, Jesus is talking about building his church. It's the great, famous revelation that Simon Peter had. It's the first time that Peter didn't open his mouth and stick his foot in it. When he really had a revelation of who Jesus Christ really was. And so Peter says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, Peter, and Jesus said to Peter, Upon your confession, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And the church has been built for some 2,000 plus years. The church is being built. You and I are part of the church. We're part of the corporate church, the, the overall church that's literally around this globe. Some that have already gone before us, some that may come after us. But we're still part of the church of Jesus Christ. It was in the 16th chapter of, of Matthew's gospel. That Jesus made this then this statement after he had said he'd build his church. He said to Simon Peter, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Now it's an interesting study when you start talking about the keys of the kingdom. Because Jesus then made an interesting statement when he said. And I don't have, I, I may come back to this later on because I don't have time to deal with it this morning. But Jesus said, Peter, you have some keys. And in your sphere of influence, here's what you can do. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Talk about authority. Talk about power that you and I possess. That you and I can stand on this planet and, and make a decree and heaven listens to us because we hold a set of keys in our hands. Now, obviously they're not physical keys, they're spiritual keys, but, but keys give me a sphere of influence that I have authority in. I don't have your keys because I don't have authority in your sphere of influence. You don't have my keys because you don't have your, my sphere of influence. I hold my car key. I, have, I, I, drive a Nissan, I, drive, I drive a black Nissan Rogue that's parked outside. Now, after the service is over, I have the authority with this key to walk out to that black Nissan Rogue, push the button, turn and get in, turn the key on, or, or, or hit the brake and push a button. And it automatically comes in. Now, if you take my key and run off, then you've stolen my key. You've stolen my car. You have no influence whatsoever in my automobile unless I turn my keys over to you and say, I need you to drive my automobile. I hold a key to my office. I give you the keys to my office. And you have the authority to go in and out of my office. I have the authority to go in and out of my office. Or I may give you the keys to my apartment and you have the key to go in and out of my apartment. You really don't, but I do. I have the key to go in and out of my apartment. That's my sphere of authority. Nobody else can trespass that. Just like I can't trespass where you live, you can't trespass. But Jesus said to Simon Peter, here's your sphere of influence. And it was an amazing insight. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, that's, that, that, that's mind-boggling to me. That's mind-blowing to me that you and I, as the church of Jesus Christ, have that much authority inside of our lives. The problem is I don't think we really use that kind of authority as the way we should. But I don't want to talk to you about those particular kind of keys. When I begin to receive this word that the Holy Spirit, and I believe God gave me a word for Christ Harbor Church, that as I begin to receive this word, I begin to think about keys in Scripture. There's the key of Calvary that, bring, that, that, that opens up my redemption for me. If it wasn't for Calvary, you and I would be for eternally lost without Jesus Christ as our Savior. There is the key of fasting that through Jesus taught the power of fasting that if we fast, certain things can happen. When I discipline my physical body and step aside from food or some other thing, some other activity that I'm bound with, and I give that time to the Lord, there's something about fasting and, and linking it with prayer that gives us authority in a sphere that maybe we didn't have authority in before. But I don't want to talk about the key of Calvary. We may come back later. I don't want to talk about the key of fasting. I don't even talk about the key of worship. I want to talk about the key of song this morning. And I take my text from the 54th chapter of the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah is writing a prophetic word to the people of Israel. Now let me lay a groundwork for you real quick like before I get into the heart of this. 
There are 66 books in the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Go home and count them. There are 39 books in the Old Testament. There are 27 books in the New Testament. We are New Testament people. Even though I love the Old Testament, that is the law. That's the Old Covenant. You and I, after Calvary, live in the New Covenant. We live in grace. That's what Jesus came to do for every one of us on Calvary. But there are things and principles in the Old Covenant that are relevant for me in the 21st century that I need to pay heed to. And this is one of those principles that the Holy Spirit is directing me for this congregation this morning. And it's the key of song. Now, when I opened up the book of Isaiah, when you read the book of Isaiah, it is a miniature Bible because there are 66 chapters in the book of Isaiah. The first 39 chapters deal with the Old Covenant. When you go from chapter 1 to chapter 39, Isaiah the prophet is talking about the Old Covenant. When you get, to chap when you get then to chapter 40 on to chapter 66, now I'm dealing and I'm in the New Covenant of what Jesus Christ has come to do for you and me. When I got to the 54th chapter of the book of Isaiah, because in that chapter he's talking about barrenness. Now listen to me carefully. You have to know the culture. You have to study history. The culture of Isaiah's day was if there was a woman that was barren, she was worthless. Thank God that is not the, seat, the, the, the sign of which you and I live, uh, the times that you and I live in today. But in Isaiah's day, if a woman could not produce, she had nothing to offer. That's why, Re that's why Rebecca felt so worthless because she couldn't give Isaac children. And that's why Hannah prayed for a child to be born because in that society, a woman that could not bear a child seemed to be worthless. And so God speaks to Isaiah the prophet. Because barrenness, now listen to me carefully, barrenness has to do not just with a woman that can't bear a child. Barrenness has to do with a lot of things that you and I go through in our lifetime. I may have plans that I've, I've set down and all of a sudden I can't achieve those plans that I once had in my heart and once had in my mind and I can't get to what I was wanting to do and all of a sudden I become barren of trying to achieve or may have, I may have goals that I'm trying to set and I never get to those things. Sometimes they miscarry halfway through the, 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 the ordeal because of situations and things that might come my direction. So barrenness has to do with a lot of other things besides a woman that can't bear children. This morning, somebody put on a prayer list after I had finished the first service, after speaking on this subject, asked me to pray for it, and, and, and I don't know who these people are. They gave a private, but part of it was pray for the, the, the fertility of a couple that needs to bear children. If you're here this morning and want to bear a child and cannot do it, I believe this sermon is for you as well. But it's deeper than that this morning, ladies and gentlemen. God has a word dealing with this key of song. God wants to release something over Christ Harbor Church that will literally liberate us and set us free as we begin to sing and glorify God in ways like we've never sung and glorified God before. For, my God. Amen. So we're going to look at this now and see because when I get to chapter 54 of Isaiah, he's talking to the church. He's talking to you and me. We're now in the new covenant. So here's what the Isaiah the prophet has to say. Verse number one. It's in your Bible, but it's on the screen as well. And here's what God says to the individual that seems hopeless, to the individual that seems rejected, to the individual that seems like there is no self-esteem inside of your life whatsoever. Here's the word of the Lord to you this morning. Sing. Sing, O barren, you who have not born. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not labored with child. Because now listen to the word of the Lord. For more, say more. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. In other words, I'm sending a word to you, God says. To, he said through Isaiah, I'm sending you a word. Get ready. In, in, in fact, go a little further to the next verse because here's what he said. This is the prophetic declaration. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. In other words, to the barren, he said, get ready. I'm going to bless you in ways that you cannot imagine. Eye hath not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart the things of, that, that God, into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. So if eye has not seen and ear has not heard, what do I do? I enlarge the place of my tent. I strengthen my cords. I get myself ready because I believe in, in a process. 
prophetic word. I believe this is a word for Christ Harbor Church. When God himself has come down this morning to tell every last one of us in this building, you who once were barren in your life, and there may not have been joy, there may not have been fruit, there may not have been victory, there may have been those chains that we sung about this morning, that, that chain breaker that has showed up this morning in Christ Harbor Church. I say to you by the word of the Lord, enlarge the place of your tent. Get ready because heaven's going to visit Christ Harbor Church. We're going to lengthen our cords. We're going to strengthen our stakes. We're no longer going to be barren. God is coming with his glory upon every one of us in this room today. Look at verse number three. For you shall expand. Look at, listen to it. You shall expand to the right and to the left. And your descendants shall inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Look at verse 4. For he says now, do not fear, my God, for you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced. You who once were disgraced, no longer will you be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Now listen to his promise. Look at verse number 5. For your maker, say maker. Your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. My Lord. Amen. Wow. What a word that Isaiah the prophet gave to the church. What a word he's given this morning to Christ Harbor Church. To say to every one of us under the sound of my voice. The key to seeing God do what he wants to do in Christ Harbor Church is you and me having keys inside of our hands, having our sphere of authority, and saying to the enemy, you can come so far, but there's a line that's being drawn right now. We draw a line in the sand. You can come so far, enemy. You can come so far, devil. But that's as far as you can come because we hold the keys in our hands, the keys to the kingdom, that God has given us the authority that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven and whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Now, I'm going to give you at the end of my message four keys, but I want to talk to you for just a second because Scripture, the word of the Lord, has to bear out what I'm talking about. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So is, is God interested in us singing? Is God interested in song? Let's find out. Look at, look at the scripture verse or look at uh, on the screen this morning for this. There's a relationship in the Bible in 2 Corinthians, and I don't have time to go through all of this. You, I, I trust that you will take it, read it this week and look at it for your own devotional time. But there is a relationship to singing to victory in battle. There's something, there is something that happens. Now watch carefully. There is something that happens when God's people begin to sing. That's why I like, that's why in the early service we have hymns. But in this service we have praises. And Damon and the band begin to lead us into worship and honor and uh, to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why that song that he sung while ago about the chain breaker, the prison shaken Savior. I love that song because there's something about singing about who Jesus is that when you and I begin to exalt him, he leads us into victory no matter what kind of battle you and I face. Now you may have come to this service this morning with, with having the, the hardest week in your life. You may have had all kinds of battles going forth, but I'm telling you this morning upon the authority of the Word of God, if you will learn this key and you'll grab hold of this key this morning and take the Word of God just like Jehoshaphat. Now here's what he did. Let me tell you in a short sentence what he did. He put a choir out in front of the army. That's the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard of in your life. Try going to the United States military and try telling them the next time we go into battle with, the United, with any nation as the United States Army, we would say to you, sirs, pick out the biggest church in the United States of America and put their choir in front so they'll sing before we go to battle. You know what they're going to do? They're going to look at us like we're smoking something. And they're going to say to us, there's the door, don't let it hit you in the behind. Because that's the most asinine thing I've ever heard of in our lives. But think about Jehoshaphat for a second. When the prophet of the Lord came to Jehoshaphat because the children of Judah were facing an enemy and the prophet came and said to Jehoshaphat, listen, he said, Jehoshaphat, here's the word of the Lord to you. Now in chapter 20 of the book of 2 Chronicles in verse 20, your Bible, my Bible says, if you believe the prophets, your, every word they say shall be established. If you believe what the prophets say, every word shall be established. And so Jehoshaphat had a choice. Do I listen to this person that's come to tell me, here's the word of the Lord for you today. 
instead of putting like you've always done the army out first God says you, do, you are to do this put the choir out first and here's what they're to do they're to sing praises to the Lord let them go before the, before the army and let's see what happens and lo and behold this book says that when the choir begin to sing my God when the choir begin to lift their voices to heaven and begin to sing and praise the name of the Lord, the word of the Lord says that God sent ambushments against the enemy and the children of Judah never had to fight one bit in that military entanglement. I've come to this podium to tell somebody in this service this morning, whatever battle you're in, it doesn't matter, my friend. It doesn't matter what kind of battle you're going through. If you'll learn this principle, You'll learn this key of simply saying to the Lord, I don't understand why I'm going through what I'm going through, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this problem under my foot, and I'm going to lift my song in praise to God, and I'm going to exalt the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the same God that sent ambushments against the children. For, in behalf of the children of Judah is the same God that's going to send ambushments for the people of Christ Harbor Church today. Amen. Now there's a second thing. Look at the second thing. In Psalm 32 verse 7, God tells us to sing in the face of bondage because in Psalm 32 verse 7, David said, you will surround me with songs, plural, songs of deliverance. So when I'm facing bondage, I just have to take the key, stand in the middle of that bondage and start lifting my voice. There's a third one. Look at the third thing. There's spiritual breakthrough. Now, we, this prison shaken Savior that we sung about this morning, I love that because in, the, in a Philippian jail at midnight, with their backs bloody, with their backs beaten in stocks and bombs. Instead of crying and complaining and whining about why in the world is this happening to me, Paul and Silas in the city jail of Philippi begin to sing praises at midnight and the Bible says God sent an earthquake, opened up the jail doors. The, the, the warden thought everybody had escaped because there was no light there and the warden called for a light when Paul said, hang on, don't kill yourself, we're all here. And the Bible declares that the whole warden and his family were brought into the kingdom of God, baptized in the early morning hour. Why? Because as they begin to sing praises to God, God sent an earthquake. You want an earthquake spiritually this morning? Then I say to you by the word of the Lord, start singing. If you'll start singing, God will shake some things loose by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. There's a fourth thing. I'm about to get excited. There's a relationship of the word of God to your life. Now watch. Now I put this on the screen for you to see. Look at this. Look at Colossians 3.16. There's something that happens when I begin to sing the word of the Lord. Now watch. Look at the, look at the verse. Colossians 3.16. Here's what pa Paul said to the church at Colossae. Is it up there? There you go. Thank you. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Yeah teaching and admonishing one another. How are we to teach and admonishing one another? Here's how you do it. In Psalms, that's what David wrote. In hymns, that's what we sang. And spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Wow. There's something about, there's something that happens when you, because when we sing in a congregation, we're teaching one another. We're admonishing one another. But you say, Pastor Gary, I can't carry a tune in a bucket. It doesn't matter if you can carry a tune. God didn't say you had to have a melodious voice. He said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So if all you can do is make a noise, come on, make a noise. Make some kind of noise that will bring glory and honor to the Lord. Because we're admonishing one another. We're encouraging one another. We're singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. We're singing. And when we sing together, hell doesn't like what's happening in this congregation my God there's a fifth thing now look look closely there's a fifth thing that I want you to notice there's the song of the Lord that relates to the creative power of God now some people believe that Job was the first book ever written in the Word of God it wasn't Genesis it was the book of Job Job is the oldest book in the Bible and Job wrote in the 38th chapter you can go home and read it this afternoon Job 38 verses 4 to 7 the Bible said, Job said, when God created things that you and I look at today and things that we cannot see with our natural eye, 
When he created them all with his spoken word, the angelic host all around him began to break out in worship and praise and began to sing praises in the glory world at the creation of God, that God was doing. Can you imagine after God had created the stars and the moon and the sun and the grass and the earth, how glorious it was to hear the angels sing, but how melodious it must have been when all of a sudden he created Adam and created Eve and the angels began to worship and adore and magnify the glorious name of the Lord. Now there's victory, ladies and gentlemen. When I begin to sing, something happens just like we sang this morning. Bondages are broken. Chains are snapped in two. Things that once had me bound no longer can hold me bound when I loose myself and begin to worship and praise the name of the Lord. Let me give you four keys. Let me give you four keys. Four keys on how the key of song works. Now listen to me carefully. Song is not incidental. We don't sing just to fill up space. We don't have a song service just to waste time. We start 15 minutes early now for a simple reason. I want the atmosphere charged with the presence of the Holy Spirit by the time you walk in here. Because you're going to come with needs that I cannot meet. I'm weak. I'm, it's impossible for me. I don't have the power to meet your needs. But I do know one who does. And it's my responsibility to bring his presence into this place. So I ask you, and Damien asks you, and if you come to the early service, the early service asks you, let's sing. Because here's what happens when we sing. Song is not incidental. It's a key to the service. It's not liturgical. We just don't sing songs to fill up liturgical words. Song is life begetting. Isaiah 54. The, the prophet said, Isaiah wrote, he heard the voice of the Lord saying, Sing, you that have been barren, you that have not produced anything, you that have started out with plans and not seen them fulfilled, you that have had dreams and watched them miscarry. I've come as your pastor this morning with a word from heaven to tell you today in the name of the Lord, start singing because there's something that happens when you and I begin to sing. Life begins to be formed. Life begins to grow. Victory begins to come. Life begins to flow out of our innermost being. And where the river of life, listen to me now, where the river of life flows, things begin to happen for the glory of God. Amen. I want the river of life flowing in, in Christ Harbor Church. And the way we get the river of life flowing is this life begetting song that we release by the power of the Holy Spirit inside of us. There's a second thing that I want you to see. Song is a natural means of uniting people together. There's something happens when we start singing. Just stop sometime. In the middle of, uh, in the middle of Damien's singing, just stop and listen to the other people singing around you. Because there's something about when all of a sudden we start singing, there is a coming together of hearts united in one accord. And when we are united in one accord, hear this pastor this morning, there is not a devil in hell or out of hell that can stop the church of Jesus Christ when we sing that kind of song among the people of the Lord. There's a third thing. Song is a beautiful means of praise and worship, my God. I love what we do around here in worshiping the Lord, but listen to me. There are three heavens. There's the atmospheric heaven, there's the starry heaven, and then there's the third heaven where God himself dwells. Paul said in his writings, I believe it was to the Corinthians, that he visited the third heaven. He said, I don't know if I was in the body or out of the body. That's what the Bible says. But he said, I can tell you this, I went to a place where I heard things that are too great to even write or talk about. So he had, so when he, in his spirit, whether in the body or out of the body, he went through the first atmospheric heaven, past the stars, into the presence of God himself. It didn't take him long to come from planet Earth to the presence of God, but he went there. Now listen carefully. The atmospheric heaven is where the enemy himself reigns. I wish I had time to talk to you more about this, but please, when the enemy was kicked out of heaven, the devil himself, Lucifer, the worship leader of the choirs of glory. He took a third of the angels with him and God kicked him to planet earth and kicked him into the atmosphere. So when I go to praise and worship the Lord, I have to go through the atmosphere of the enemy. Sometimes, sometimes when I start to pray, it feels like the heavens are brass and I can't get through. You ever felt that way? 
that, that all I'm praying and all of a sudden my prayers are hitting me back in the forehead and I'm thinking my God what is wrong with I search my heart I test my, my life and I go, God, is there something wrong with me? And it's just like nothing can go through. Nothing happens victoriously until I wake up my mind and I think, wait a minute. I, my heart's right before God. This is the enemy. This is the devil trying to do this. So here's what I do. I put on a good praise song or I put on praise music or if in my auto, if in, if, if, in, if, if okay. If, if I'm in my automobile and I'm going down the highway, you've heard me talk about this. You will see me bebopping every once in a while going down the highway. I do have my hands on the steering wheel every once in a while. I may take them off and lift them up. If you catch me going down the road this way, you know Pastor Gary's praising the Lord. I am. I've just praised the Lord. The enemy has battled me, so here's what I'm going to do. Devil, you're not going to stop me. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to wave a white flag. I'm not going to turn tail and run. You're not going to put fear in my life. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to the third heaven, not physically, but spiritually. And I'm going to praise and magnify the name of the Lord in song. And when I begin to sing, chains are broken in the, in the spirit realm. And my spirit begins to soar. And victory begins to come to you and me. All because song is a beautiful means of praise and worship to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. My God. There's a fourth thing. And I'm with this, I'm finished. It's a powerful means. Song is a powerful means of challenging darkness and declaring the truth. That's why we put song service at the very beginning and also at the end. Because I want you singing. I want you singing in your car. I want you singing at home. I want you singing on the job, whistling. I, I, I want a praise song to be in your spirit, coming out from the innermost being of your, of your life, worshiping and honoring and magnifying the name of the Lord. You just say, Pastor Gary, we, I, I just like to do that one hour a day on, on Sunday. Oh, my God. If you do that, if you do that, the devil's going to beat your brains out. He really will. But if, listen to me, if, I don't know how many is that. Is that six? Okay, thank you. It's a private joke. If you'll begin to sing, and you'll begin to release the song of the Lord from your innermost being, there's something that will happen by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because all of a sudden, I begin to challenge, not me, but something inside of me begins to challenge darkness. And truth is released. The authority of truth is released. Because all of a sudden I've gone past the enemy's territory and somehow, some way I've connected with the God of the universe, the God who is my husband, the Lord, my redeemer, the God, the maker of the entire globe. He is the God of the whole earth and my spirit is connected with his spirit and song begins to erupt out of my innermost being. Whatever you've come with this morning, whatever need you face in your life, be it physical, spiritual, mental, or financial, Whatever it is that you face this week or next month or next year, ladies and gentlemen, I say to you by the word of the Lord, sing, O barren. Sing in the name of the Lord. Release a song from your innermost being. Let it go. Because when you begin to sing, the enemy cannot stand up in front of you and me. We have the key. The key of our authority is to release ourselves in song and see God show up and show out in this congregation for the glory of the Lord. With this, I'm finished. On Friday night, and I speak to somebody either in this service or over the internet. Friday night, I was on my way back from Harlingen. I had an appointment and I went over to Harlingen and I was coming back. And I was on 77 and I was on the road just to, about to exit. And in my mind, I, I think it was God that spoke to my heart and said there'll be somebody in the service, whether they're there physically or over the internet, who've been living under a cloud of, a, of depression for several months, maybe even longer than several months. They'll be in the service on Sunday morning. They'll be watch, or, or watching Sunday morning. Yesterday morning, I was invited, and uh, George Patterson and his wife, Barbara, picked me up here at the sanctuary and carried me over to be part of a, 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 an Island Baptist Church. They were having a session that I've been asked to attend, and I, I, I went. 
And during the, the part where we took a break, I, I stepped out in the hallway and I could see it again. And it was, if you live on the island, you know yesterday it was foggy as could be. Just unbelievable fog. And as I stepped out in the hallway and I looked out the door of Island Baptist Church, the Holy Spirit once again said to me, that person will be in the service or they'll be watching over the internet. And they've been living, and what they've been living under is like that fog that you see with your eyes. And it's been like a cloud over their life, and they've not been able to shake it. They've asked me to break it for them. They've asked for prayer. They've said certain things, and they can't, they, they've even read Scripture, and it's not been affecting. But I've come this morning with a word of the Lord for you this day. To say to you by the power of Almighty God... That the key is not having necessarily hands laid on you. And yet I believe in that. I believe in agreeing. If two or more agree on earth as touching anything they ask, it shall be done. I believe in that. But I'm saying to you, you have the key this morning in your hand. You hold the key that whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And the word of the Lord to you this morning is, if you're that individual today under the sound of my voice, just start singing. When you walk out of this building this morning and you get in your automobile, crank up the music and start singing. Crank it up loud and start singing. Put it in your ears and start singing. When you walk into your house where you live, put on some music and start singing. In fact, just get happy and start dancing a little bit all over your house. Get, have victory. Not to be, I'm not trying to get you to be emotional. I'm trying to get you out from under that spirit of oppression and depression to say to you, if you'll release song, heaven will release joy inside of your own heart and soul. My God. So the key, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. I have my key, you have your key. The key is song in the name of Jesus. Let's pray, let's pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Wow, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, it's honestly, I'm honestly not trying to get these people emotional. I'm not trying to work them up into a frenzy. I've just delivered what you birthed inside of my spirit this week to say to them they hold the key inside of their own lives. But somebody under the sound of my voice, whether they're in this room or whether they're watching via the internet, they've been living for months, months, if not years, under a spirit of, a, of depression. They can't break it. They take medication, but it still doesn't help. But the key is not in medication, though I'm not against medication, Holy Spirit. The key is in song. The key is releasing what's inside of us, breaking forth into joy. And yet we may not feel like doing it. It may go against everything that we think inside of our minds. But just like Jehoshaphat, if we we'll believe the word of the Lord, we'll prosper. Prosperity, will, victory will come our way if we believe, thus saith the Lord. And so this morning in the name of Jesus, by the power and the authority invested in me as the pastor of this congregation, today as we release song from our innermost being, may we sing with joy. May we sing with victory. We serve a prison shaken Savior. We serve one who breaks chains inside of our lives. Holy Spirit, we release song past the enemy's camp into the presence of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And when we touch th the heaven's throne, the oil of joy begins to fall down upon us and victory comes to our heart and life. And I'll give you the praise and the glory. The touch your people under the sound of my voice. May their lives no longer be the same from this moment on. And I'll praise you now in Jesus' mighty name. Would you stand with me, please?